There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Greg Blaskovich, how are we doing today? Terrible. You look great. I can't begin to tell you how much I hate being up this early. I couldn't tell. I hate I mean, I, to me, when I see you in the morning like this, I'm like, this guy loves the morning. When the alarm went off, I just laid there praying that I wouldn't hear any bumps from your truck. <laughs> and like, <laughs> 10 seconds later, you're hopping out, probably brushing your teeth. And, oh, God. I, I don't even want to talk about <laughs> Good morning, Greg. Today is the day we're going to kill a bull. Um, we also picked up a straggler today. Josh Koontz, welcome Thank you. to Elk Camp 2019. I think one of you may have drugged me last night. I fell asleep instantly. Yeah. The night went very too. fast. I know. I slept really good, though. Uh, let's get, what would you say we get ready? And I think we let's should. Go, let's go uh, kill some elk. That is one of the brightest moons I've ever seen. Yeah, it's not great. Not great for elk hunting, but really pretty. Yeah. Pretty cool. I'm sitting up here glassing just to hear bulls. There's bulls bugling like right, right below me here. And they're just like taunting me, knowing that I can't, can't go on. This is why I want to get an early start. It takes a while to get up in here. How's all that sea level training working out for you? Day one, it was tough. So we just got up, but I give for about an hour and a half. Got up to where we're going, and we just heard a bugle. But we're all kind of doubtful that it's. Uh, I think it might be other hunters. Just seems a little too good to be true. So. We're gonna go check it out though. It's like 200 yards away in the trees, but we'll treat it like it's an elk. <coughs> Turned out that that bugle was a dude, but a really nice guy that we just ran into who's uh, backpacked in up here and who said there was a giant bull on a raghorn here just this morning, a little bit earlier. So we're gonna bounce up and give him some space, but there's elk in here and they were bugling, which is good to hear. And just a super nice guy, man. Like another upside is that we lost a whole bunch of elevation to go talk to that guy, so now we get to walk back uphill. Now we gotta climb some more. But we're gonna keep going. I think the best, the best part of this particular area is, is up ahead of us anyway. So um, good to know there were bulls like right where we're at. We are at right now at a giant. Yeah. So we can get a on that.
So we just had that bull. There's a bull. Just let him rip to be a goal. And this time, all four of us heard it. Yeah, we all heard it. We all agree on the direction it's coming from. It's like straight ahead. I don't think it's it. But I think we want to get the wind's kind of blowing in our face here a little bit. And a little uphill, so we need to circle around back that way, see if we can't get in one of those aspen groves. Yeah, he's like stupid. He's like below us. Like he's below us. A little bit, which is good. We want to below us. Let's circle around. You want to go into this dipper? It's gonna be a good day if I don't wake up with horrific oh, leg cramps. Man, I'm, I'm about to hurting. hit that ibuprofen. Yeah, yeah, I'm hurting yeah. today, guys. I don't say that too often, but it's, it's legit today. Past three days, we put in 22 miles. So far, that's just so far. We have Is that more to go. I feel like that's here. not the mileage isn't the thing. It's the ele it's the up and down that's really like well knowing the terrain, the mileage is impressive. Yeah. Well, we took, after a uh, pretty long day yesterday, took a lazy morning today and relocated, so we're in 
completely new country today. Trying to get away from a little bit of hunting pressure. Um, so hunting a little bit more open country uh, for at least the next few days than we have been hunting. And we lost a couple members. Greg had to go get some gas because he was a poor planner and didn't get enough gas in his truck. So he had to run into town and fill up the gas. So he's gonna meet up with us later tonight. So Josh and I are gonna go waltz about in the mountains and see if we can't find some elk now. Um, BK also had to leave us, so he was only with us for a short time. So now we're down to two guys. Maybe we're more deadly now that we have only two of us. So about midday and we're just grabbing our stuff here and we're gonna pack up and start hiking and hopefully we run into a really, I don't want to say dumb elk, because I feel like that denigrates elk, but like just hopefully run into the right situation, the right elk in the right situation. Oh. It's supposed to get colder tomorrow, and I can't wait, because this heat, it's not a lot of fun to hike in. I think right now it's like it's a rebirth, Brad. <laughs> like I've been reborn. Anytime you relocate, right? It's like your optimism bumps up a little bit. Your legs feel a little bit more fresh. I'm just sitting here. It's like two o'clock in the afternoon. Glass in this basin. Josh got this first milk of the day. We spotted, we spotted a bull there. Came out like an avalanche. Game my Josh. Nothing gets past this guy. <sighs> pure, pure luck. Does it again. This actually looks like a pretty nice bull. shoot and he disappeared and we can see the other side of it and we can see where he came from and there's cliffs above him so he hasn't popped out so we think he bedded down in there and uh, I'm gonna try and make a play on him so I'm gonna uh, go out and hike up above him and hopefully the wind cooperates and see if I can get in on him So it's uh, 3.45 now, and unfortunately, I just saw an elk cross that same avalanche chute, uh, moving left to right at the same elevation we saw that bull a little while ago. Don't know for sure if it was the same bull. I didn't have time to get my binoculars on it before it ducked back into the trees. Um, didn't seem spooked but it wasn't hanging around at the same time. So I'm still looking up. I've yet to see Brad show up in that uh, meadow between the two bands of cliffs that he's gonna try to put the sneak, but the odds are certainly lower that there's anything in that little strip of timber because we only knew for sure one elk had gone in there, that one bull. Um, I've seen one come out, like I said, don't know if it's a bull or not, but most likely it was that bull. A few more minutes left of light here. Just kind of enjoying the sunset up on the mountain. It's such gorgeous country. I love being out, especially this time of year. But I love being out always. No elk yet today. But something eventually is probably going to die. I'm optimist about these things. I just need to keep at it. I think tomorrow split up a little bit and uh, I'm gonna do I'm probably gonna do a big hike tomorrow into some country I've been in before but it's been a few years that's good elk country it's all good elk country there's sign everywhere well, today's off to both a good and kind of a crummy start I'm gonna start with the positive. That uh, on the hike up here, when it was still dark out because of the moon, 
I looked up at one point and silhouetted in the light of the moon on an open ridge where two elk and I pulled my binos up and it was a really nice bull and like eight or nine cows that I couldn't see right away and they must have heard me because they were staring at me pretty hard like they could barely make me out just like I could barely make them out with my binoculars and eventually they kind of trotted off they couldn't smell me but they didn't like what they were seeing so that's good see an elk and I get up to this mountain that I'm trying to get on top of and I see a bull across the canyon and maybe like six or seven cows across the canyon too kind of feeding down the wrong direction from where I want to go and they're a long ways away so good to see elk um, and then I see another I don't know where he came from but I saw, I see another hunter I saw another hunter where I, the direction I came from just about 10 minutes ago uh, so no idea where that guy's going and I'm supposed to I made a big loop around Josh and Greg today to let them hunt this this basin so I kind of went up on the side of the rim, canyon rim around it and made a loop around it we we're gonna meet up later this morning but I'm seriously contemplating kind of going in complete opposite direction letting them hunt in some other country and doing what I like to call a BF a BFH, big freaking hike. Since we initiated Operation BFH here, um, I have covered some serious ground, gained some serious elevation, and I'm up high on this peak. It's the tallest peak around. And I've been hunting elk like I hunt mule deer. It's the middle of the day, just been glassing up shady spots in the trees and lo and behold I found an elk uh, so they don't appear to be rutting or bugling or making much noise right now so I'm gonna sneak in or try and sneak in on this herd here um, I hope there's more than one in there I can only see a cow right now I'm just assuming there's gonna be a bull with her but who knows um, I have a decent chance of getting in close at these things bit of a precarious stock but hoping there's a bull but if not honestly at this point I'd probably shoot a cow almost made it happen but not quite a cow and calf 57 yards thought that bull was gonna come out behind him. it didn't it got our feet down this drainage he bugled once so it must be a good size herd I could see a handful of elk in there back on, I'm going to start dogging them. Oh god, I can't believe that. It just sucks. Man. I'm generally pretty positive, but man, just after a day like today, and just like all week, just having some close encounters, but I just can't conceal the deal. I just can't believe that. Oh, man. Isn't that the way it goes, though? That's what I like about bow hunting. It's like you think it's gonna happen. Bomb down that mountain. Wind held and everything. And then I got just down to this last. All I needed was another, like, 10 yards. There's a little rise here. I just needed like 10 yards to get to the top of that thing. And they were all right down below, except for one calf. It was up on top, behind a tree that I did not see. She saw me. And they all blew out of here. If you've never had to call an up by yourself, it's a tough ball game. It's a lot easier with two people. I felt pretty, I would have felt confident this morning. As I was working this herd originally, if I had two people, you could have sent one guy up ahead and had one guy hang back and just get him worked up, but it was hard. A lot of bouncing back and forth. Unbelievable. I felt like a good shot.